Welcome back to the Roundup, everybody, the show where we cover a whole bunch of gaming news stories. Today, kind of, well, really interesting. So, Dreadwolf, the new Dragon Age game. We've got a bit of a key story in that. We've got CCP, the creators of EVE Online, getting into Web3 and pissing off their community, as you might understand. A little bit from 343, some stuff from Valve, and did Xbox cancel a PS5 game? And if so, is that a, a little bit funky considering the regulatory stuff? Well, let's get into it, starting with Bioware Magic Mark Dara and Dragon Age Dreadwolf. So the news here, which comes from VentureBeat, is that Bioware are right now heavily in the post-production stage of Dreadwolf, the next Dragon Age game. They hit the alpha last autumn. And to make sure that the game gets enough support, they are throwing many bodies at this problem. So the new Mass Effect game is currently in pre-production and a core of that team uh, that is being led by Mike Gamble, who is a veteran, uh, they are continuing that work. However, outside of that core number of people, people from the Mass Effect team are working on supporting the Dragon Age team with getting final aspects of the game pulled together ahead of a still unannounced release date. So this is the one thing that is absolutely like, I think the most important news for us. So many times we see just that release date keep on getting kicked back and back and back. And every time that happens, there's a cost, right? There's a marketing cost, there's a goodwill cost. And that is something that I think really has the big companies wanting to chance their luck getting a game out early. Whereas at least if they haven't publicly committed to a date, like pushing back an internal date absolutely sucks, but it's not as ca uh, catastrophic. So I suppose we can take that as a good thing right? That maybe if they need a bit more latitude, they could actually get it. Now, what is interesting is that Mark Dara is coming back. Now, he's a former Dragon Age project, uh, project director. Pretty big name, actually. He's returning to Bioware as a consultant on the title. And the weird thing is they didn't reach out to him for help. Actually, he approached them about returning. Uh, who knows why this is? Maybe he heard through the grapevine that they could do with some help. Maybe he thought, hang on a second, getting Dragon Age out the door is literally my thing. It would be kind of cool to play a role in this at the final stage and help the team. Maybe it's something he would find personal, you know, like worth and uh, passion in. But this is notable because since his departure from Bioware, he was pretty publicly critical of the company's development process. Basically, he was skewering the whole Bioware magic in his uh, game development YouTube series. And I saw some people say like, yeah, well, you're complicit in the problem. But it's like also, well, when you're just a dude in the team trying your best uh, and you are fighting against how everything has been set up and how all of the projects, uh, you know, resources are allocated and timelines are decided, like, yeah, maybe you won't be able to fix Bioware magic. But anyway, that he was uh, seemingly in the past not able to fix that problem, but was publicly quite critical of the problem and is now trying to come back actually may be a sign that things are getting a little bit better. Obviously, we'll have to see. Uh, it's not like you can really pre-order the thing anyway right now, but hopefully good news. Ultimately, good Dragon Age for Dragon Age fans is good. Um, yes, there was that like alpha leak a while ago, but as we covered in that video uh, at pretty good length and the video really went viral, which makes me think that people were very interested in that. Um, it's, it wasn't exactly a super fair way of uh, the game being presented to the public, right? Of just a small amount of out of context footage. Uh, so who knows, only time will tell. I'll tell you what time won't tell because we already know it. And that is that CCP's plans are certainly a little bit rough by their audience. Now you could say that if there's one game where a, uh, you know, funneled extraction economy, uh, you know, based around crypto where it could work it probably is like the eve online universe or you know that kind of vibe i mean come on think about all the stories uh, that you hear but um certainly people are seeing it in many ways for what i think we all think it would be so ccp have decided that after shuttering their virtual reality efforts this time their next experiment is going to be 
the chain, the blockchain. They've raised $40 million to work in a AAA blockchain game set in the EVE universe. Funny thing for CCP, they've always had EVE Online as the nice, happy cash cow, and certainly EVE has had its ups and its downs. We all remember the This Is EVE campaign that was surrounding multiple notable inst uh, mo notable things in the game, such as Rooks and Kings, rather famous, um, you know, famous campaign against one of the larger corps that was uh, sort of dramatized in that trailer. Trailer did absolutely Absolutely massive, but the problem is, you know, your free trials go like this, but your players don't go up as much because Eve Online is dense game. A lot of people bounce off it, and you know, with like their shooter game Dust Five One Four, their virtual reality stuff, like with Eve Gunjack, and um, I forget the the Eve VR uh, game that had Katie Sackoff who played Starbuck and Battlestar Galactica uh, do. What was a marketing beat that ended up just being a cameo, which was quite unfortunate, uh, but none of that really worked out for them. So now, this is the next thing. Of course, they also had their whole vampire game, which also didn't work. So while CCP have been going for quite a lot of time, running EVE successfully enough with its ups and its downs, they've really struggled to branch out, and they very clearly wanted to branch out. So, this is basically building upon discoveries of its research and development team to enable full-scale development of a new AAA title utilizing blockchain tech set within the EVE uh, universe. Key game systems are developed on-chain. This new project will also leverage smart contract blockchain technology focusing on persistence, um, composability, and a truly third, uh, open third-party development to create a new relationship between virtual worlds and players. And of course, if um, <laughs> the financing was led by Andreessen Horowitz, if you're anywhere in and around VC news, a lot of people are very, uh, very pro Andreessen Horowitz. A lot of people really like to clown on Andreessen Hor uh, Horowitz. You make 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 of that what you will. Um, of course, with pr participation from a bunch of other uh, groups, even including Nexon. The Eve community's not particularly happy. <laughs> what a surprise! Uh, obviously, PC gamer they went and found some of the the great things uh, i mean look at this getting the rights to world of darkness but canceling the project before it ever sees the light of day developing and releasing dust 514 as an exclusive to a console with a limited lifespan developing project valkyrie just to jump in the vr bandwagon but shutting it down to focus on new developments and revealing that it's a blockchain game so thanks to the expressive um acting job of vince mcmahon yeah i think we know how the eve community feels about this one pretty shit pretty shit. I think from the perspective of them, for a long time, they've basically thought like, okay, Eve's great, but it's not going to grow that much. It's fundamentally like stable, but niche. How do we move to the next level of scale? And they've just constantly tried and tried and tried and tried and failed and failed. And hey, if you want to get a bunch of the beans in, um, yeah, ch the, the chain has been one of the ways to do that. Who knows? Maybe next month they'll announce a new AI driven game. <laughs> okay. The next thing then. Xbox, did they cancel a PS5 game mid-development? But also they stopped microtransactions, maybe? What's going on? Let's talk. Redfall, right? Big old, uh, you know, now an Xbox first party exclusive because they acquired Bethesda. And as a part of the press tour, the co-director Harvey Smith may have done an oopsie. He may have let slip some things that... Uh, the chiefs at Microsoft maybe didn't want him to say. A PS5 version of Redfall was in development, but then it was cancelled, confirms Arcane director Harvey Smith. We were acquired by Xbox, and it was a change with a capital C. They came in and said, no PS5, Xbox PC Game Pass. Uh-oh! <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not good! Uh, mostly I say that because... Think about all of Xbox's public messaging, right? They've all just been like, we are acquiring... Okay, the microphone's gone. We are acquiring for the gamers. We are doing this to bring more games to the gamers. That's why we're doing this. Uh, and then, of course, we see in the actual backroom thing, oh, no, they actually canceled the PS5 game. So you can really see how this would be quite rough. Um, so he probably wasn't meant to talk out, uh, talk about this, but I mean, yeah, Redfall was supposed to be a full multi-plat game. Microsoft turned, uh, you know, turned up. That obviously changed. Um, but what is kind of interesting is um, this also apparently had an impact on microtransactions. Okay, so this is speaking to WCCF Tech. Uh, Harvey also revealed this. We try to be very clear that there are no microtransactions and there is no store. We are very proud for that. 
If you find a costume in the game, you can have it. Simple as that. Okay. That's good. It's not what we're used to, but it's bloody good. Uh, they confirmed that there are plans for DLC and ongoing support, but it's not all about nickel and diming. And this is interesting because um, basically some screenshots from uh, back in 2021, they were suggesting to us that there actually was going to be an in-game store. So I don't know what that means. I mean, does it mean that Microsoft just uh, decided, hey, let's not do the store? Maybe Microsoft sees, you know, the way things are going in the industry, thinks it's no longer a good plan. Maybe they see that some of those live service ambitions uh, kind of skewered Halo Infinite a bit and it certainly caused it problems. Maybe. If so, that's certainly good to hear from Team Green. But amidst the backdrop of all of this regulatory stuff going on, to know that they... uh, Because, you know, already... Uh, Microsoft said to regulators, "Listen, right? What, you know, when whenever there was like a little bit of um, you know hubbub from the regulators with the Zenimax thing, uh, Microsoft basically said, hey, it doesn't really make business sense for us to withhold these games from all those other platforms because we'll make money.' And then they went and withheld those games from other platforms because obviously they want to do better. Uh, now, you know, decently recent sales figures." do show that uh, Jim Ryan and Team PlayStation are thoroughly skewering Team Green. They're, oh, they are, they are thwomping them on console sales. The PS5 is the undisputed king. I say this as somebody who plays on my Xbox Series X all the time. I think it's a great console, a great experience. I get so much value from Game Pass on it. I'm a very happy Microsoft customer, to be clear. And I'm also a very happy Sony customer. Um, So ultimately, the more the two of them compete, the more that like we all kind of win. But uh, yeah, certainly having more evidence of that kind of thing going on. um, Yeah, a bit rough. That being said, given all of the documents that the regulators will have probably parsed through, perhaps this isn't a surprise to them. Next then, and still covering Xbox, uh, 343 are going to be guaranteeing some Halo stability by stopping people from playing it, which is obviously not a fantastic headline. Uh, for some personal you know, clarity, I will say, I actually regularly play Halo Infinite um, on the Series X, and I have a bloody good time doing so. So for all of the bad stuff around this game, it still is something you can jump into and casually have a good bit of fun in. Anyway, uh, so here's here's the deal. Following the last patch, which added uh, some nice things like some ray tracing options, uh, the game actually no longer is running for some people. The issue is that some GPUs cannot even launch the game because if you have under four gigabytes of VRAM, it is non-functional. Now, the problem is, uh, well, not the problem, but the thing is that under four gigs of VRAM was always below the minimum requirements. And that basically means that 343, it's like, they technically haven't rug pulled based on what they sold to people because they always said, look, minimum four gigs. You need to have that or more. Uh, But uh, basically they closed a bit of a loophole. And ultimately that does mean that for those impacted players who are you know, probably running on uh, maybe an older GPU, a more budget GPU, something like that, um, you know, maybe a laptop or something, they do now have the rather uh, unfortunate situation of just, yeah, can't play the game, which uh, does kind of suck. Finally then, we have a visual novel teaching you to do uh, taxes uh, they got killed by Valve. So what's going on? Uh, of course, this caught a lot of, uh, caught some eyeballs when we just saw the headline, this dating sim will help you file your taxes, which, uh, hey, if we can sort of two birds with one stone with that, pretty good. It's called Tax Haven 3000. It's a virtual novel where a girl named Iris helps um, the player navigate the complexity of the US tax system ahead of filing, of course, with the IRS. Do you get it? Um, But yeah, it's not your typical uh, VN because, well, yeah, you you go on dates with Iris um, and she does ask you to reveal some secrets. Like your social security number. (laughs) Now, um, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) hi hi, hi there. Do do you think I could have your credit card information, please? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, come on, card number, expiry day, security code. <sighs> oh, they are accessing levels of power we have not seen before. Um, 
Now, this is actually from a real-world company in Art Collective called MSCHF. Mischief. Yes. Uh, and they have done these kind of like statement art pieces before. Um, things like Little Nas X's blood-filled shoes um, and an ATM leaderboard art installation. So basically, the whole thing is a big old shit post that actually doesn't connect to the internet. Uh, <laughs> in some cases, it's probably far safer than most big box tax uh, software. Iris doesn't kiss and tell. She wants to know your personal information to prepare your tax return and nothing else. So basically, right? Imagine if instead of using, you know, those like, uh, you know, accountancy things, Imagine if you just played through like a 12 hour long dating sim and at the other end of that game, it just produced your tax return. I mean, hey, to some people that might be the dream. It might actually, uh, who knows, uh, you know, allow you to have a tax filing season with a happy ending, which is not what you usually expect. Um, but given that this is a little bit funky um, and, you know, it did move from itch uh, over to Steam, uh, Valve delisted it with without warning um they've not been told why uh, they say they actually went through valve standard verification process and it was ready to go live on april 4th um but uh with the itch version of the game like getting all those headlines i think valve actually clocked on what was really going on and then delisted it without an explanation who knows who knows i mean i think we can all guess right so there you go that's the news for today. Um, I will endeavor to be back with a working microphone stand tomorrow. Uh, but otherwise, have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. You can check out this video next, and we will see you next time.